So guys, we are here at the Harden Trotter. Today we're gonna be showing you guys how to take apart an entire pig or half a pig. As long as you guys know how to do one side, you should be good on the other side since the pig is exactly the same right down the middle. What you need to know, we'll probably get to learn here. And James from here from the Harden Trotter, he's one of the co-founders, he's gonna be helping us out on how to do this. He's gonna be showing us how to take apart the pig, what are the different parts and what the names are and what all those little things. He'll be able to explain to us a whole lot better. And today's kind of special because they're cutting up my half pig. So I'm super excited to see how this goes. That's James right there. He's gonna be helping us out, butcher this thing up. I am literally seeing at half a carcass and I have no idea how to divide this thing up. Could you enlighten us, <laughs> please? Sure, yeah, uh, let me see. First of all, as far as anatomy goes, you have the, um, the fresh ham, you have the top sirloin area, the tenderloin is right here, lays right underneath the spine. Um, we'll take that off first. We'll second right after we take all of the kidney fat off right here on the belly and then you have the loin section and then you have the shoulder section which is the pork butt the picnic and then you have the ham hocks and the trotters nice. and we'll start to break it down so which part are we taking off first right now so first thing I want to do is kind of open up the belly section I have to take all this uh, kidney fat off I'm gonna separate go right along the contour of the ham itself just so I can start to get access to the whole thing. So this is the kidney fat. This actually surrounds the kidneys. So I'm guessing that's what protects the kidneys from yes. anything? Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, this is what you would typically, this is what you would use for lard. It has a really high smoking temperature. Nice. Um, and it doesn't have any flavor to it, so so this is what we, like, since I'm a carnivore, I love eating a bunch of meat. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I'm buying this pig is that's exactly what we would want to cook maybe ribeye steaks with, like throwing a little bit of that beforehand as opposed to using maybe olive oil. That way you get that high smoking point and you get a really nice crust. Yep. That's... Yeah, that would, that would definitely work. And where is this pig particularly coming from? These are Cook's pigs, which we've used since day one. They're originally out of Julian, but they moved up closer to the uh, to the slaughterhouses, and so they're uh, they're based out of Santa Rosa now. Big pastures up there. The pigs just roam around and forage and get all their food just right off the pasture. So what I'm gonna do is separate the, uh, the shoulder or the Boston butt and picnic front ham hock and the trotter from the loin section. So what I'm gonna do is use my trusty boning knife, um, <laughs> find the fifth rib. So I always count one, two, three, four, five. And so in between the fifth and the sixth rib, I'll make the cut. Go all the way through down to the... By the way guys, this is not an easy task for all those of you who think that, you know, we'll chop this off with a kitchen knife, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a reason he's using that saw. <laughs> yeah. Jason got nothing on him right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is uh, split it right in between the vertebrae. And so, it went through. This guy, which is a scimitar, and then cut all the way through. Ooh, nice. So, you can see from there, that looks like a pork chop, and this is where the pork chops start, right on that side. 
James brought up a great point right now. That looks like a giant piece of bacon. Like if somebody was to give me this the entire side, I'd be like, oh, that's just a big piece of bacon. That's exactly what I would think. <laughs> yeah. I'm finding out more and more that I don't know much about the anatomy of these animals. <laughs> Since we're going to do porterhouses with the tenderloin, I'm actually going to find the one joint, which is right here. Um, you have the zero joint, and that's where the spine and then the tail comes together. Um, right there in that kind of U shape. And so we always separated the top sirloin and the loin section at the one joint. And so, so I'll just go straight down. And then, so we're gonna leave this part of the tenderloin on there. On this part, it's actually a pretty good amount of the tenderloin still. So you'll still get a nice chunk of tenderloin goes right up against the hip bone. How long have we been doing this for? Let me see, so I've been doing this not in a retail aspect, but I've been breaking down animals ever since I was a little kid with my dad. We would go hunting and then break down everything ourselves. But as far as, uh, as, far as retail goes and really learning how to get the best yield out of everything, I've been doing it for about about six or seven years now, I guess. Nice. Something like that. And then luckily I got the gift of being able to work with my hands fairly well, so it came pretty naturally to me. That's awesome. And what do we have there? So that is, that's the butt end of the, uh, the tenderloin. Mm -hmm. And so once you clean it up, um, it'll look nice and pretty and- um, More like is, a tenderloin. <laughs> yeah. Next step is I'm gonna separate the, uh, the ham from the top sirloin. Yeah, and right before buying this, I remember asking you, um, you know, what what do the pigs eat and what do what do they feed on while, while they're out on the fields? We went into this discussion where pigs just don't eat grass; they eat a bunch of stuff. And these guys are pretty good about letting them feed on whatever they have to feed, as opposed to feeding them a bunch of soy-based food and a bunch of other stuff. Correct? Sure, that's totally correct. Pigs are are foragers, and so they just kind of run around in, in, in a natural state. They'd be looking for like nuts and roots and stuff like that, whatever they could find. Luckily up there, there's enough pasture area where they can actually do that. They don't supplement anything. And then, wow. <laughs> you have your whole family. I'm over here standing like, whoa, that's a big ham. And he's like, yeah, there's another ham. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna start working on the loin section next. So I'm gonna throw these back in the uh, walk-in just so they stay to temp. Got it, and we'll go from there. It is super cool and super nice of him to actually let us, like show us how all this is done. Cause I think it's super crazy. Like just going through all the parts and everything. I'm like, eh, just trying to stay away from the knives and the saw. What are you taking out of there? All right, so I'm gonna hang this. And so what I'm actually going to do, just like the Achilles, there's tendons up in the wrist area. That's a tendon? This and so, a yeah, this is a tendon. And so I just cut that out and there's a hole. And so I could hang it by this. They're really, uh, they're really strong. So we're gonna take the belly section off. When you're butchering an animal, um, you're, you're looking for certain areas that take and guide you through. It's typically fat sections like this. The reason that I took the shoulder off between the fifth and the sixth uh, vertebrae is because that's where the shoulder blade ends. And so you can see a little bit of the cartilage of the shoulder blade right there. Oh yeah. From there on, you're not gonna have like a piece of bone like stuck in your pork chop. So there's little tricks like that that you kind of learn as you go. So this is a pelvic bone and it comes to a 45 degree angle right here. Okay. And so I always make an angle or a, a cut, a little incision right there. So that's gonna be my line. And then over here. Oh, that's gonna be your guide. Yep. So I have to do the same thing on the other side too. 
So what I do is, as far as you really want to look at the size of the pork chop, generally this little fat section, I'll go about an inch in front of that and make a line. That's a good size pork chop Ooh, yeah. right there. And then I'll connect those lines. And so that's my guide for the bone saw. And so I'm going to go through the whole rib section and, um, and then take this whole piece. Okay. So I'll flip it back, go all the way to the ground area of the block. And then go around like that. And then since this is hung, the skin's pretty tough. So you gotta just get through the skin. So, and that's the other section right there. That's the belly, and then this is the loin. Okay, so I get it now. So that's bacon, and that's bacon, and what you put in there was bacon as well, and that's bacon. Yeah, yeah the whole thing's bacon. bacon. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So this is, but this is like <laughs> all jokes aside. This is where the bacon comes from, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. And so we're actually gonna cut, so the spare ribs are still on there. Which we'll, ones are the spare ribs? Um, the bottom section, so. Oh, okay, there yeah, you Yeah, you can see the ribs. I can cut those off right now, actually. Yeah, let's go through that section. I'm gonna find the last rib, which is right here. Okay. This is cartilage. Got it. And so at the end of every single rib on every animal or human being that has ribs is gonna be cartilage that connects to your sternum. There you you can see this little ridge, and that's where that cartilage is that hits every single rib. And so I always want to stay about an inch out so I don't actually hit it because you'll cut through it very easily without even knowing it. Yeah, because that would suck if, it, if people were actually asking you for that section and you just were to go through it. It was like, oh, well, well I kind of screwed up. Yeah, uh, and, and you also don't want that, since this whole like bottom portion is bacon, yeah. um, you don't want like a chunk of cartilage in your bacon. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> definitely no. Yeah, so I always use a little, a little cautionary inch. Again, you're just going through the fat, correct? Just yep, kind of like so I'm looking at the seam. Trying to stay as parallel to the uh, to the block as possible. It almost looks like the fat's your guide. Like the fat is usually your guide. Yeah. So you just do little cuts as you go. Because you kind of know where you are at that point. So those are the spare ribs. Nice. And then uh, and then you have the whole boneless belly. So this will brine and smoke. You got bacon. That is a lot of bacon. I am so gonna pass out on this. <laughs> I am so gonna be swimming in bacon for like the next month or so, or probably a week. All my money's gonna go to buying pigs and bacon. Pigs and bacon, pigs and bacon. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is actually pretty easy. We're gonna take off the top sirloin section, and that's in between, like we discussed earlier, between the one joint right there oh, so where the curve is okay. and then so this is the one joint that's where we took that little piece off yep okay that. so that's we're gonna separate this whole section and so this could be totally up to you it could be it can go to sausage it can go to top sirloin steaks um, which a lot of people don't see very often What's it called again? Uh, that's the top sirloin. So that's, oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, so you have the loin section. So you have the rib section and then the uh, like the center cut loin section, which we're gonna make into porterhouses. Inch thick is good for you. Yeah, actually, um, an inch thick is great because anything more than that, then I have to reverse here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so I just go in between each vertebrae, which is about an inch. And so I start with the saw and then I'll start cutting them off. Uh, the simple. 